If you want to get the most out of your licenses, the investment in one of these is much, much less than the license itself. Try and optimize your workflow and get as much work done per day at the minimum cost. That's what cost-effective engineering is all about and maximum output for minimum cost and minimum time. The mechanical engineering team have these things running basically 24-7. We have to find that balance between performance and reliability and also availability of parts such that we can use a mild overclock and that will give us a very, very high throughput for the simulations. I can't remember the last time we had a massive failure that we couldn't fix with extra parts that were lying around the office and we push them 24-7. This is the first simulation PC I built. This is actually the PC that I started the business with. It cost me about 20,000 bucks in 2010. Finite element analysis was pretty high end then. We had as many cores as we could afford for SOLIDWORKS simulation and it ran some Abacus simulations through the years and did a great job. When we started in the backyard shed at mum and dad's house, it would be sitting in there over the weekend with no air conditioning on. It would be 40 degrees inside. The thing would be as loud as a truck, but it would still pump out simulations and get them done over the weekend. We'll still run little simulations on it if we need to. This machine was basically built maybe three years ago. It's a 10th generation Intel Core i9. This machine cost us probably about 12,000 bucks two or three years ago. It's got a big fat gaming graphics card in it as well. The top of the range gaming graphics card at the time. That's because the CUDA cores, the GPU cores on this, can be used to solve simulations as well. And we do a lot of 3D product rendering software like SOLIDWORKS Visualize. We're starting to use Blender in a lot of our workflows. They can really utilize these gaming cores. This was our way of trying to be as cheap as possible, I guess, while still having as much beef as we possibly can. It's probably been working nearly 24 seven for the last two or three years since we built it. We now prefer to use ANZUS as our final element simulation. We've also got a license of ANZUS for computational fluid dynamics, and we have a limited number of cores we can use. So we basically want as fast as possible single core performance, pump out as many simulations as we possibly can with the licenses we have. Gaming machines are different to high-end desktop workstations or server machines. They have very high instructions per cycle IPC, you know, basically single threaded scores. We want to get as much compute time out of these machines for as long as possible without the thing destroying itself because it's going to cost us money. And the main money that's going to cost us is downtime. We do overclock these machines, but we do them mildly. This one here can basically have all cores on five gigahertz, which is a nice compromise. I've gone further. I actually originally set this machine up so we could go even further than that, but things get very hot very quickly and you might only be getting an improvement in simulation time of maybe 5%. We want these machines to be running reliably and as fast as possible, which is kind of the polar opposites of each other, so there's gotta be a compromise. We've now built a new machine. This machine is a 13th gen. Yeah, 13th gen Core i9-13900KS, I think it's called, and it is a beast. Intel gaming CPUs have had generational leaps again, and we're achieving about 35% reduction in our simulation times. We might run 12 different iterations of the same simulation. Each simulation may be one and a half hours. It's a custom build for us because some of the workstations that are spec'd up online, they're a bit proprietary and things like that. We like to be able to have things that we can easily change if we burn something out or something goes bang. ANZUS allows us to set up many different iterations of models within the same ones. That's what the guys are kind of doing here. Each one of these simulations could be one and a half hours with the minimum amount of detail that we possibly need to get the insight we want. And I learned that years and years and years ago where you basically put on simulations, your mesh size was tiny, you'd wait 24 hours or more for a simulation and it wouldn't give you much more insights than literally just having a big coarse mesh, solve the simulation in an hour, figure out where your stress phases are, go and refine that mesh, run it again. So within the same period, you can be running multiple simulations and learning how the system's working. What the guys do now is they basically set up multiple models with different geometry or different refinements. They will monitor the output from these simulations and if they figure out, okay, this one here's not working properly, whatever, they'll cancel the simulation and they'll run another one. This is a structural simulation of a mechanical uh, autonomous device that's taking some sort of actuator arm loads and we're trying to make sure that the system is moving and deflecting in the way we want it to but also has no stress concentrations that are going to exceed the required life of the product. 
when you're running a simulation, you should always be monitoring that the system's actually working the way you intend it, and should also be monitoring temperatures and things like that. So this has got a temperature limit of 90 degrees, which is pretty high. These new CPUs have performance cores and efficiency cores, and we've pinned the program to using the performance cores only. They're sitting at 5.7 gigahertz. We're using an all-in-one off-the-shelf cooler and as much airflow as we basically can give it. So I can see here the maximum sort of temperatures that the CPU is seeing is about 66 degrees. That's that's great, that's, that's really good. This is using the Gigabyte automatic overclocking settings or the default BIOS overclocking settings. Just the upgrade from this machine to that machine has been giving us about 35% increase in throughput for about 10,000 bucks. That's what it's all about. Greatest output for the least time and cost. Optimizing the use of our equipment so we can give the best value to the customer. That's cool, it's got IGB everything. And it's got SpongeBob. And look, 